Okay, so uh, in this session, I want to talk about uh, hydrostatic forces on a plane. Uh, so we're going to consider three conditions, um, three type of planes, and uh, consider three uh, configurations for uh, calculating these hydrostatic forces. Okay, so let's get started. <clears throat> so the first one is... Um, uh, horizontal plane so for a horizontal plane let me show how we do that so say here we have a tank of water Okay, so we have a tank of water here that is filled with water up to, say, here. Okay, and here we have free surface. So we have water here. Okay. So this water, and I want to calculate the um, the hydrostatic force on this plane here okay this is a horizontal plane so to do that we are going to calculate the pressure on bottom of the tank okay and so here you have a pressure that is induced by this water on top of this uh, on top of this uh, horizontal plane okay so let me draw it so we have this pressure that is exerted by this uh, column of water okay so what is this pressure if this is h the depth of the water here we have this free surface and then the atmospheric pressure here that we can assume it is zero and uh, based on what we talked last time we're uh, we are going to just calculate the, uh, not the absolute pressure, but the relative pressure, okay? So then this pressure here is going to be what? This pressure is going to be rho g h, correct? where rho is the density of this uh, tank of water or tank of uh, this fluid, H is the depth and G is gravitational constant, okay? So then, so this is gonna be rho G H and so the force is gonna be simply rho G H on a horizontal uh, plane is gonna be rho G H times the area of this plane. Okay, so if this plane is a 2D, say if it's 2D and I just draw it like this,
then this area you is just gonna uh, multiply that by this area because you are gonna have this force all along this so you just need to find this area and then multiply it uh, to get and for example here you'll see you still have water so let me just try it fully so you better understand and then we have another support here So this is like a 2D, 2D thing. And then this is full of water again. Okay, so this is gonna be uh, the magnitude of the force that is exerted on this horizontal plane at the bottom. So to be more clear, this is kind of the plane that we are considering. Okay, so you just multiply it by, multiply this by uh, this force rho g h by the area and you will get the uh, simply the force on this horizontal plane so the second condition is a vertical plane so what would be the force on a on a vertical plane so for example what would be the force on this plane here on this side this is a vertical one right so previously we calculated it for this plane here, the bottom plane. And now we wanna calculate it for a side plane. So let's see what, what, would we, what it would be for a side plane. So for the side plane, so let me show it here. So we are going to have something like this. So I want to calculate the hydrostatic force say on this if you have this uh, tank of fluid or any or water and then it is filled with water or anything, any type of fluid up to here. Say this is H. So it is filled with water. Any fluid, right? It's not necessary. So this is a general thing. Okay, so I want to calculate the hydrostatic force uh, here on this plane, on this um, vertical plane. What would be the force on this, like this, this, uh, this plane here from a 2D view, but I have just uh, shown it in one, uh, one dimension. So here, let's see, we have this uh, coordinate system of X, Z. And you know that, that we know that the pressure, so the pressure on tank ends, we know that the hydrostatic pressure, the formula is rho G H. So here it should be zero. And then here we have rho G H, right, at the bottom. So at the bottom, we are gonna have a pressure that is 
forcing with row g edge. And then here it's gonna be zero and in between them it's just a linear change, right? It's linearly changing. So for example, here it's gonna be lower than the bottom because it's, as we go uh, lesser in depth, the pressure is gonna decrease, right? And if we go deeper, the pressure is gonna increase. So it's a linear change because it's rho g edge. Okay. So the pressure on the tank ends is going to be a function of the height or z, which is going to be rho g times h minus z. Right? So when z because the coordinate system I selected starts from here, right? At the bottom. So when z uh, is zero, then we have the highest step, uh, which is gonna be rho g h. And then when z is h, which is here, then we are gonna have a pressure of zero, right? So this is the uh, pressure on the tank uh, ends. And then you can calculate the force simply by multiplying it by area. So you are gonna get rho g h minus z. And this is gonna be a function of height. So it's gonna be rho g h minus z times a z. Like if the area is also changing, this is gonna be, you can make it very, uh, kind of uh, depending on z and so the whole force is going to be the total force is going to be the integral of that from say z equals to zero to z equals to h rho g h minus z times a z dz Okay, so this is gonna be the total force. Uh, for sh so for a simple, uh, um, say, for a simple um, um, triangular shape uh, with a rectangle, uh, with a rectangle here on the side, A is gonna be constant in height, so it's not gonna change. And so you can say, um, you can just calculate this integral, right? It's uh, pretty easy. Uh, integral so we are gonna we are gonna calculate it later on but this is how the total force on a vertical plane is calculated okay so now a more complicated uh, one is when we have a, a inclined plane so it's not horizontal or vertical but it is an inclined plane so and inclined plane so this was horizontal vertical and now this is uh, inclined plane so for an inclined plane, say here you have water. Okay. And this is a free surface. And then you have a plane here, a two dimensional plane that I've shown here. And we want to calculate the force that is exerted on this plane by this fluid. And this has a angle of theta, okay, from this origin. 
and this origin is where we are going to calculate the uh, force. So to do so, what we are going to do, we are going to select um, a small fluid element, a small element, uh, sorry, a small element for this uh, inclined plane, and then we are going to calculate the force on that small plane, and then we are going to calculate the total force. Okay, so. If R, which is the uh, force that is exerted on this, uh, we can calculate it as follows. Okay. So F R is going to be the integral of rho G H D A. Okay. So, and uh, let me just uh, make one step before that. So before that we had this df, which is the small force, is gonna be rho g h dA, right? So here, for example, we have a df, which is the, uh, the for this small element that we have, uh, we have considered here, so let me show it with this. We have considered this a small element. This a small element has a so this a small element has an area and also I want to calculate what is this small force that is exerted on that and so this has an edge from here to here okay the depth of that so in order to calculate the force on this small element it's very simple you just calculate df equals to rho g h times dA right and then in order to calculate the, the whole force on this you are just going to uh, sum up all these small elements, the force of all these small elements. And so you are going to get uh, this formula, which is the integral of, so the FR is going to be the integral or the sum of all these small DFs, right? And so I'm just going to, I just going to write this one, right? Which means that FR is going to be the integral of rho GH times all these small elements. Okay, so instead of H, I'm going to write it based on Y here. Okay, based on this coordinate system. So it's going to be rho G. And what is H here? H is, we have a Y here. So let me show it again. So this is theta. This is H and this is Y, right? This is what we define. So H is going to be, so let me write it this way, so sine theta is going to be what? It's going to be H over Y, so H is going to be Y sine theta. So instead of H, I'm just going to write down Y sine theta dA, okay? And then we are going to assume that the density of water and this theta, the plane, is not moving. So the density of water is constant, and also this theta is not moving, or this theta is also constant. So for constant theta and rho, I can write fr is... I can, because these are constant, I can take them out of the integral, so I can write, and uh, g is also constant, so I can just write it rho g sine theta, the integral over the whole area of this plane, so this is the whole area of that, of what, what is remaining is y d a from this equation here okay so this is going to be the total force on this plane 
And so now we can kind of simplify this and uh, find it for a more different uh, type of, type of uh, kind of conditions. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna define something which is called as first moment of the area. So I'm gonna define this integral, integral of a y dA. I'm gonna say this equals to y c that I'm gonna find a constant y times the area. Okay. This is called first first moment of the area okay so when I define this this means for example whatever this uh, the value of this integral is okay I'm just gonna say this equals to a times a y c bar like an average y an average y right so this can be simply defined and once you define this y c I can just plug it into the original equation of f r so f r is gonna be rho g sine theta so instead of uh, uh, rho g instead of uh, this integral I'm gonna write it as y c a so I'm just gonna write it as it's gonna be rho g a y c sine theta right so I'm, instead of that integral, I just wrote a y c, okay? And interestingly, oh, okay, let me write it this way. I think then that would be easier. So I'm gonna write it as rho g uh, y c sine theta a okay and interestingly this y c sine theta is what from this relation here you can see i can just write it simply as h c right simple like that so if this is y c i can define it as h c and just write it as instead of y c sine theta i can say it is h c right so let me write it down so it's going to be rho g Instead of these two, I'm going to write HC. So it's going to be rho G HC A. So very interestingly, this means that there is a centroid here. Okay. You have to go to that centroid, find the edge, the depth of the centroid that is acting on this centroid of this plane. Then you calculate the pressure there and this that's because it's kind of the average of the whole plane then you're gonna multiply it by the area of the plane that pressure is kind of the average after you multiply it by the area you are gonna get the total force okay so let me show that the top view of this object so we better understand what we are doing so far so if you have this object here this is an inclined plane, right? So this has A centroid here say and here we have this uh, this is our coordinate system which starts from there so I'm just gonna show it this is y 
and this in this direction it is x we call it x okay and then from say if we have a resultant force our resultant force which is the total force if we, if we say it is exerted here so we can also define if this is our coordinate system that this has a y r the uh, resultant y okay and if this is centroid of this plane and then i can also define this centroid as in the yc so i name this as yc and then this is going to have the area of a and so this is let me show this is simply location of the resultant force and this is the top view of the object or of the plane the inclined plane okay this is top view this was side view and also kind of two-dimensional and this is when we look at from top okay so let's see now the question is okay so we found the uh, magnitude of the force so the magnitude of the force is gonna be this so what you need to do is you just get the centroid you're gonna calculate uh, the rho g h there and then in the centroid you are gonna multiply it by the area and you're gonna get the, uh, the resultant force okay but how about the location so the question is location of fr what is the location of fr so here i want to find this location so in order to do so we are gonna uh, work with uh, and use the momentum the moment equation so we want for for this to be in equilibrium the moment of the fr must equal the moment of the distributed pressure force right so here we looked at uh, this pressure force, we found it, uh, the force magnitude, but now in order for this to find this location of FR, its moment should equal the moment of the distributed pressure force, okay? So they, they have the, the same, they produce the same moment on this uh, inclined plane, okay? So let's calculate that. So what is the moment of this uh, resultant force? Say I want to calculate it around this plane that I have here. So it's going to be FR times YR, right? So this is the plane. If you have a, uh, say you have a, you want to calculate the moment of this one. You have FR here and then you have this is uh, this blank is yr so the moment around a o is going to be fr times yr right so the same thing applies here so the moment say around o is going to be 
fr times yr, which equals to what? It equals to, which equals to, it, should, it must equal to the moment of the distributed pressure force. Okay, and what is the moment of the distributed pressure force? We can find it from here. So for any small element here, we have a df times its y, y, right? So here you can, let me show it here. So here we have df, and then here it has its own y, right? If we write the moment around O, it's gonna be df times y, the moment around O, right? So, I'm just going to write it, and it should equal to the sum of all those small moments, for all, all those small elements, so I need to integral. Integral means kind of summing, summing all these small forces. So, the integral over A of Y uh, times DF. Okay, so this is going to be the the force of the moment of uh, these, all these small pressure uh, forces versus the resultant force, okay? So they all have to equal. So I'm gonna write it down as integral of A. And instead of DF, I'm just gonna write this uh, here we had, rho G H times DA or rho G y sine theta dA, okay? So I have y times, instead of uh, df, I'm gonna write down rho g y sine theta dA, so rho g y sine theta dA, okay? So, again, I can, uh, I, we have assumed that rho density is constant in this fluid, G is already constant, and theta is also, we assume, is constant, it's not moving, we are not changing the plane, okay? So I'm just saying, um, I'm just gonna take all of this out and write this as, so instead of FR, I'm gonna write uh, here what we have. So I'm gonna have rho G Y C sine theta times Y R equals to rho g y, rho g, I cannot bring y out, so rho g uh, sine theta, the integral of y square dA, right? And from both sides of the equation, this rho g sine theta is going to cancel out. So first rho g, and then we have this sine theta, which is going to also cancel out. So I can write down that the location of resultant force or YR is going to be the integral of A over the whole area of Y squared dA over and I think I forgot something here. Yeah. So FR also has an A, which I forgot to write. So let me write it down. Uh, it should be, let me write it here. So it should be rho G Y sine theta A times YR equals to this. So it's gonna be, uh, YR is gonna be this integral over YC times A. So this is gonna be the location of this resultant force. Okay, and what is this called? So this, the integral of Y squared dA is second moment of the area okay 
So this was integral of y dA is the first moment of the area, and this one, the in this integral, is second moment. y squared dA is second moment of the area. Okay. Also, it's called moment of inertia. Especially in solid mechanics uh, context, you should have all seen this. And we show this with Ix, okay? We show this integral with Ix. So yr is simply Ix, the moment of inertia, over axis x, right? So because here we had the axis of x, so the moment of inertia around this axis is going to be called ix. If we were to calculate it around this, it's, it would be iy, right? So here we have ix. And it is going to be ix over yca. Okay. So in the interesting thing about this is that all of this you can uh, show that you can find all of these in tables. Okay, so we are going to go to later onto the tables in the book. There are all tables of this uh, y square. I am. Um, second moment and uh, in all the books uh, uh, first moment and second moment of the area okay so we can further simplify this formula okay and write this moment based on the moment from the centroid okay so what does that mean so that means that if we have say this plane here so say if we have this plane here okay and this is something simple you can also calculate at home this is x and this is y, okay? And here we have the centroid at this point. And this has an area of A. And so you have yc here from this point to here is gonna be the y of c. you can show that the integral of over a of yc y squared dA, which is this integral here, equals to the integral over a of y minus yc square dA plus yc square times a okay you can show the following maybe exercise or at home practice That this relation is valid it's very simple you, you just need to uh, substitute some integrals and then you will find this relation okay and this is defined as the moment area the moment of uh, inertia around the centroid and we are we show this as i x c okay so if this is your x then you are going to calculate these i x c over moment of inertia 
around this uh, the uh, the second moment around this centroid and then this is what you get which is ixc and here it was ix if you got it here and this relation holds that they are equal to each other plus this yc square times a okay so if you add that you're going to get that and this is i so this is i x okay so for y r i can write the resultant uh, force the location of that is i x c over y c a plus y c square a over y c square a over y c a which these are i'm going to cancel out so only i'm going to have y c right so plus y c So this is very important uh, relation for finding the result, the location of the resultant force. So sometimes you might ask you, okay, find the magnitude. So the magnitude is simply this, rho g h c a, the centroid. You find the centroid location. You calculate rho g h there, and then you multiply by a. You are going to get the uh, total force on this plane. But the location, you need to go to the second moment. Of area and you can find it from this relation ixc depending on the shape of that uh, it's gonna be different okay so I'm gonna show I'm gonna just write two moment of area second order and these ixc you can find all of them in uh, tables and we are gonna give you the tables if uh, there is something in the exam or in, also in the homework okay in the, uh, all these tables uh, will be given and you don't need to memorize them but you need to know how you should use them okay so for example here i have let me show let me show the moment of area for This is centroid, this is x direction, and this is y direction. So if this is b half, and this is also b half, this is a rectangle, and this is a half, and this is also a half so the area for this one is clear right the area of this rectangle is b times a the moment of inertia around of uh, for x over the x direction of centroid is going to be 1 over 12 b a cube okay this is the moment of inertia or second moment of area around x and then around y i y c equals to 1 over 12 a b cube okay so these are from the calculations from tables these are just some integrals these are these integrals here if you take them you're going to get these results and interestingly i x y i x y over c if you take the, if you have this uh, integral if you calculate a x y d a everything is going to cancel out like uh, from these sides if you take from both sides so it's going to be zero going to be positive and negative numbers so it's going to be zero 
So these are the specifications of IXC for a rectangle. And then let's see for a circle. So for a circle, again, if this is the centroid of that, and then here this is x and this is y, and this length, is r or radius okay so the area of this is the area of this uh, circle is simply p r square right for this circle the i x of centroid equals to i y of centroid because of symmetry right it doesn't matter if you are here or here or anywhere you calculate you're gonna get the same second moment of inertia here or here so they are both gonna be equal and this equals to p r 4 over 4 and again i x y c is gonna be what it's gonna be zero because of Everything is going to cancel out again. Okay, so this was uh, how we can calculate the second, the moment of second moment of area, and these are all these tables are going to be given to you. So you just need to plug in and use them to calculate these forces on an inclined uh, plane. So let me just uh, review what we learned today. So in general, we learned how to calculate a hydrostatic force on a plane. So on a horizontal plane, it's very simple. You just calculate the um, you just calculate the uh, pressure on the bottom. Uh, for example, one plane. If you have, it's going to be you are just going to calculate the rho g h, the pressure, and then just multiply that by multiply that that by the area of that plane okay so it's very simple rho g h times a for a vertical plane then we have a, a hydrostatic uh, pressure distribution which is a linear function of z so you have this uh, this force here that is exerted on a vertical plane and so the pressure as a function of z if z starts from here is given here is going to be rho g h minus z and then if your a is also changing it's going to be also a function of z, but if it is just a rectangle, you can just uh, assume it's a constant value. And um, this is the force at each point of this plane, fz. And so you are going to take an integral from 0 to h to find uh, this. And we are going to talk more about that later on. Uh, we are going to so solve some examples so you, have, you can see uh, how we can also calculate this in practice. But this is the whole uh, concept of that, the whole idea that you need to calculate this. And for an inclined plane, it's a kind of, co kind of combination of these two. It's uh, the resultant force. Uh, we just need to calculate again for all these uh, small elements, rho g h d a. You are going to calculate the force and then you are going to sum them up to get the, res the whole resultant force, which is going to be rho g h d a. And then using some trigonometric uh, relations, um, we got to this equation because, and also we assume that rho g sine theta is constant. And the integral of y dA is the first moment of the area. And we can say that is gonna be uh, y c times a. And so rho g, we are gonna get the magnitude of that force is gonna be rho g h c a. Okay. So the magnitude is easy. For example, for a rectangle, it's going to be somewhere in the, on the centroid. You're going to get the uh, centroid of that object, which for a rectangle is the center of that. And then uh, you're going to get the h, the uh, height of that place. You're going to multiply it by rho g, 
this is going to be the pressure, the average pressure, and then you are going to multiply by the area, you will get the uh, magnitude of the resultant force, and the location of that, you need uh, to, we said that we had to uh, make sure that the moment of the FR is must equal with the moment of the distributed pressure force, so we calculated the moment around O, the origin here, and we found that uh, if you do this, you are going to get to this relation, yr is going to be the, uh, result, the location of the resultant force. And then we defined why, why uh, square dA is the second moment of the area or uh, moment of inertia, which we show with ix. And then using this uh, simple relation between the ix and ixc over the... Uh, over the uh, center of this uh, uh, object, we found this relation. So the resultant force, uh, the location of the resultant force is Ixc, the moment of inertia uh, of the centroid over Yca plus Yc, okay? And then I showed just some examples of this Ixc and Iyc uh, for these different shapes. If this is X and this is Y, this is how uh, you are gonna calculate it. And these are some examples, and these uh, for different shapes, these are going to be different. This second uh, moment of area, and uh, these will be given in all tables if the shape especially is uh, complex, uh, complex plane. Okay, so in the next session and lecture, I'm going to solve uh, some examples. I think uh, most of it is going to be solving just solving examples uh, for calculating hydrostatic forces on um, different type of planes. Thank you very much, everyone.